Welcome back everyone to the HWBOT World Series for Amateur and this is the second semi-final of the day and we'll have Chis Jimmy against UF Disciple that will be competing on XTU. They all use the same system. They have two times 15 minutes to set the best score on both of the system. So we are almost ready to go. Uh, let's uh, tune in to uh, Peter. Peter, can you hear me? Oh, no, he cannot. He cannot hear me. So that will be uh, soon in the next uh, few minutes. As you can see, you have here Cheese Chimmy in the in the first uh, in the first view and in the back you have UF Disciple. So you can see these guys. They are almost ready. Peter, now you can hear me. I am ready. Yeah. Okay, so you can uh, go ask the overclocker if they are ready to go, and uh, we will be. Uh, soon on our way for this second semi-final of the HWBOT World Series. That will be soon going on. We just need to make sure that everything is ready for it. Oh, there's a little... Uh, a little hiccup right here, we'll just uh, fix that one in the second. That should actually um, be soon starting. Okay, we are ready. Peter, are the overclickers ready for now? Yep, alright. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. And this is, they have 15 minutes to do the best score in XTU. These two guys are amateur. They have never been in any competition before. So this will, will be uh, this will be quite interesting to see what they can do. So Chis, Chis Jimmy on the red team and UF Disciple on the blue team. Let's switch to the screen. And you, Chis Jimmy is actually the first one to blue screen in this uh, first leg of the competition between them. If we switch back, switch back to UF Disciple screen, UF Disciple screen is here. Is running at uh, 4.8 gigahertz already. That is quite fast for uh, for someone that just that goes straight to it. But they were watching the other guys just before, so he knows some of the settings for the systems. It was like, oh, I know this system can do 4.8 gigahertz. So that was part of his strategy to uh, to go to go directly in uh, in there. But if you check out the current limit tr throttling. It's actually throttling, so the, the score won't be that great. Because the CPU is actually feeding itself to not uh, be damaged. That's one of the safety features, if, uh, if we can say. Oh, and uh, we had another blue screen on Cheese Dimmy's side. That would be interesting to see if he managed to get rid of these blue screens and uh, not be stuck by his opponent, UF Disciple. UF Disciple right now on the screen at 4.9 gigahertz. Four point nine gigahertz is quite high. That is the highest we have seen today in amateur competition. Hi, Bruno Ro from Romania. So it's one of the best overclocker in Romania. I think he's still number one in Romania. Uh, thank you for being on the stream, and don't forget, guys, to subscribe. Follow us on here on Twitch to uh, to get the information when we go live. And don't forget, we will be live again next weekend from the HWBot World Tour 2016 in Europe. Right. 
but this is it, almost the end of the benchmark here, 1437.4 cheese for a UF Disciple, that's going to be interesting to see what he can do with that score, and that is actually quite a nice, uh, a nice advantage he is having at the moment. Question from Bruno Arrow on the live chat. Are they allowed to set up the BIOS? Nope, they are not allowed to go into the BIOS. This is for the main reason that these people are amateurs and they got trained yesterday on using XTU only. This is the first step. And the reason is if we, they go to the BIOS, there is a lot of things that can be changed and there will be a lot of difference between uh, someone that did knew about overclocking but never did competitive. Uh, overclocking before and someone that never did overclocking, uh, competitive overclocking before. So hence the reason why they're not allowed to go and change anything in the BIOS. The only time we can see the system going into the BIOS is when the the system is rebooting. So this is it, side by side. Cheese Jimmy and UF Disciple both benching XTU at the moment. UF Disciple is uh, at 4.8 gigahertz while his opponent is at 4.5 gears, just to me, had to lower down the uh, the system he could. And that's it, 1420 points for UF Disciple. Not his best core so far. Another question from Bruno in Romania. Are they allowed to modify Windows settings? Uh, well, they could, but there's only 15 minutes. And, uh, well, we don't really allow that because if they uh, turn down the system, that will be uh, like, uh, they could mess up the system for the next guy. So Cheese Jimmy just got a score, A score, 1412. So we will see if he can, uh, no? And it's a blue screen! Blue screen being uh, on display of course because we love the blue screens and speaking of which the blue side is still benching and going into the lead this benching at this moment you can see you have Disciple benching in there. Not sure he's uh, super confident, but at least, at least he's uh, he is happy. He likes to be like this. He's in the lead right now. He's the leader, and there is a nine minute left in this first uh, in this first uh, leg. So this is it, Cheese Jimmy back on track, but he's at 4.2 gigahertz. Need to modify some of the settings. Still no new score for now. Cheese Jimmy is at 1412, while UF Disciple is at 1437. You have Disciple again on the screen rebooting the system. Cheese Jimmy just had a just had a break on his system just before. 
the guys are uh, actually discussing together if they can uh, if they have some <laughs> some issue or or, or similar that's uh, quite interesting to uh, to see this uh, kind of actions they are discussing all together but not exchanging information that much Thank you guys for tuning in. This is the Edge Robot World Series Final. We have six minutes left in in this uh, first round. So they're gonna have two round, two round of 15 minutes each. And these people will have to set the best core in XTU. And so far they are rebooting the system, both of them. So we'll have to, uh, to wait that uh, everything is going all right. Let us know where you come from if you're watching this live stream here on Twitch. There was a question on the live chat. Uh, Truth, what is the name of that South African guy that will also uh, help to run the workshop? Uh, that was uh, Tim, Peter and Warren. So these were the people that did help us. There was Neo, VV and QuantumX as well that were helping around. But let's focus back to this Azure uh, Robot World Series. Changing some of the settings, going to 1.3 volt, 1.35. Okay, come on, you can push more than that. Oh uh, yeah, you can go higher. No, you you can keep pushing it. 1.36 should be quite decent enough to uh, to go to 4.6. Let's see what score this will give him. Now back on you have disciple. You have disciple is restarting XTU. Because of his just uh, because of his of his crash just before, but it's still okay. There is four minutes and twenty seconds left, and he's still in the lead. And this is quite interesting to see that they only posted one score each. They only had one score. She's Jimmy trying to put the turbo boost power max playing with that settings while on the other side UF Disciple is benching at 4.705 uh, gigahertz this is quite in, uh, interesting that is uh, 200, 200 megahertz in advance of his opponent which is Jimmy Here we are, benching. The two guys are running the benchmark at the moment. UF Disciple is soon to finish it. So let's see, 4.75 gigahertz. What is the score that, can, that he can get? It need to be better than 14.37. And it is 14.55. This is a huge advance, huge advance. Three minutes till the end by UF Disciple. UF Disciple is actually um, but relax now, you have a huge advance against his opponents, more than 40 points. And this is quite impressive by amateurs who have this uh, difference in the ranking. So let's go back to uh, what the guys are doing. Chis Jimmy is ready to go and bench and he's actually at 4.6 GHz still. Still struggling with his setup at 4.6 GHz. But they, both had the s they will both have the same setup right after. Because after these two minutes, they will exchange the system. So you have disciple with use will use cheese Jimmy and cheese Jimmy will use you have disciple disciple uh, Rick. Let's face it, cheese Jimmy is having a hard time here. There's two minutes and fifteen seconds left for him to uh, to to get on that core, and he need to do like forty points better than what he have what he's doing right now to at least doesn't have too much of a handicap for the next round. Running the benchmark, the benchmark is at 4.6 GHz, the CPU is at 4.6 GHz, the core voltage is at 1.23 volts. 
We do expect that to go a little higher in the in the next few minutes if he does have the time. They are both running the benchmark at the moment. She's Jimmy is in the lead to finish the benchmark first, but he's not in the lead for the points. So let's see what Corey will get. He really needs to get close to his opponent UF Disciple, but at 4.6 here, that would be hard. 1402. This is not enough to even improve his own score. During that time, UF Disciple is slowly but steadily benching again at 4.72 GHz. But this time, he did change the processor cache ratio. It used to be at 40, and now it's at 46. This might give him a little boost in the score, let's see. 442. Not his best score so far. Here we are back. She's Jimmy versus UF Disciple. The first match of this round. There is 40 seconds left in this game. That is quite impressive to see this huge advance by UF Disciple, even though they all use the same system. We'll see if you have Disciple managed to beat Chis Jimmy's core on the same platform, uh, on the exact same rig right after. There's 20 seconds left in uh, this competition. I will tune in, Peter. Peter, you're live, so if you want to announce the end, 10 seconds, 9, 8, 7, seven 4, 3, 2, two 1. one. And this is it. And the last score we will be able to see is from Chis Jimmy. This is his last chance. Valid. This is the last chance to submit. But sadly, 1364. This is not good enough for him to um, to be able to uh, to pass through to next to the next level. So these two guys now standing there, you now discussing. Hey, what was going on? Ah, oh, damn it! I forgot about that settings, stuff like this. So we'll take. Um, We'll take a, a few minutes to reset the system so everyone have the exact same chance of having the uh, having the overclock the, the system. So what they will do is they did 15 minutes on one system each, and then the second one would just be 15 minutes each on the other system. So that will uh, be completely sure that everyone have the same amount of chance to win this uh, this competition. And uh, how this will work is we will add up both of the score and the final score will, deter will uh, define who will be the winner of this second semi-final and who is going then straight to the final here at the Edge of the World Series. Mr. Peter? Can yeah, now I can hear you. Are you ready for the overclockers to tune in to the second leg of this game? Okay, so you can uh, go and uh, announce that to uh, to the overclocker while I will be checking for the time. So the overclocker are now here. Will be. We just need a few seconds more to make sure. Okay. So here we are. Now everything is ready. Peter, you can uh, announce to the overclicker when they can start this second leg of the HWBot World Series semi final match two. All right, you guys ready to go? Three, two, one, go! That was some overclocked seconds right there, quite fast. But that's the goal, that's what we are looking for, being faster than the regular Joe, faster than default. Default is not an option, this is what we can say here for this kind of competition. So let's switch to uh, the screens, oh, uh, the right one. So as I say, she's Jimmy is the red team, while UF Disciple is the blue team. This is it. They're gonna have 15 minutes to set the best score. So far, you have Disciple have more than 43 point advance against his opponent, Cheese Jimmy. That would be very hard for Cheese Jimmy to catch up on this system. 
but we will see what the people can do. So basically, Chase Jimmy is now using uh, UF Disciple rig that he was using just before. So if Chase Jimmy is able to go very close and pass UF Disciple by f uh, score at 1455, that would be quite interesting to see. Um, on the other hand, if UF Disciple managed to go above 1412 on Chase Jimmy's system, that is almost almost a winner because that's going to be quite interesting to see how you have this uh, cheese Jimmy will be able to push that much of the score for uh, for for him to, uh, to be able to to go higher than that did the cheese Jimmy right now on the screen 4.6 gigahertz still uh, playing it safe is at 1.33 uh, volt for the core voltage Adjusting the voltage a little bit by, by, by a little bit, step by step. This is the key. Improve the frequencies, try to crash, try again, improve the voltage, crash, try again, improve the frequencies, crash, try again, improve the voltage, always like this. This is the, the only way you can do a safe overclocking without having any uh, too much of an issue. So this is it, the first core of Cheese Jimmy 1426. So that now a huge advance, but this is just because you have disciple didn't submit any score yet. This Jimmy benching while you have disciple is adjusting the system. Let's see what score he can get on his system here. The red team at Cheese Jimmy. See? Two seconds. 1452. Oh, this is quite interesting to see indeed. He is already quite close and it's like not even three minutes in the game and he's uh, uh, very close to uh, the previous point from uh, UF Disciple on the exact same system. So that's going to be quite interesting to see is at 4.75 GHz using 1.36 volt. Going back again, he didn't touch the processor cache ratio yet. Maybe he's uh, trying to get uh, the full speed out to see uh, what's going on before uh, touching something else. Going at it, running the benchmark. Let's take a look at the temperature. Temperature so far is 67 to 72 degrees. It is still okay. There is no uh, thermal throttling in. Um, there's no thermal throttling in action, so this will be uh, quite uh, quite okay so far. There's still some margin. So 4.75 gigahertz, as you can see on the CPU, 1.33 volt for the core voltage. UF Disciple is struggling with the system at the moment. That would be quite. Um, Crazy for him. It's just going back to uh, to the desktop for the change. But let's focus on Cheese Jimmy now. That is the only one benching, and he's in the lead again because you have disciple didn't submit any scores yet. Oh, and it did crash right at the end. It did crash just before the end of the benchmark. So close, but yet so far. So now that we have our. UF Disciple back in the game. Let's see what he can do. So far he's benching at 4.75 GHz, the same settings he was using on his other computer. Will that work? Because even though that's the exact same hardware being used, the MSI Gaming Pro Carbon, the Core i7 uh, 6700K from Intel, the 2 times 4 gigabyte memory of G-Skill, uh, all cooled by the H80 uh, i1 GT and all powered by the uh, Seasonic Platinum 760 watt PSU. This is the exact same hardware they use. And now it's using the exact same system. But will that work? Because there's always a little bit of uh, margin in between. Temperature could have changed between the two rounds. The humidity could have a bit. Oh, and it's a blue screen! I love this blue screen on the blue team. Blue screen on the blue team. 100% ratio, 100% fail. 
There is nine minutes left in this uh, competition. UF Disciple still didn't submit a score. That is uh, that is quite uh, quite sad to see because it's almost halfway through. Halfway through. That is quite uh, quite crazy to to see that. But it will be quite interesting to see how they can do it. So let's come on, come on, push, push that button, push, push that voltage, 4.7 gigahertz. This is safe for you guys because you know you can do it. Oh, touching the reference clock now. Reference clock is something uh, that was not quite used much except for uh, these two guys. So the first semi-final, they didn't use it that much. Uh, but she's Jimmy and Youth Disciple are using it now. Interesting to see 102 as the base clock. So we will see what can be done for that. He's then now 102 for the reference clock, but 47 for the multiplier. That means the effective debut frequency would be at 4.8 gigahertz, and he's increasing a little bit of the voltage to go to 1.38 and going to the benchmark. On the other side, his opponent, UF Disciple, is back into the game, just back into uh, XTU, and still didn't submit any score, and we are 50% into this uh, second leg. There's only 7 minutes and 30 seconds left in this one to decide who will go into the final to go against his opponent that just qualified before. So you can see both of the overclocker are uh, changing a little bit. Uh, UF Disciple is at 1.33 volts. He's going 4.7 multiplier. He's really expecting to use the exact same system settings he was using before. But uh, there's a huge advance by uh, Mr. Chiz Jimmy that was lacking behind at the end of the first leg. And it's a blue screen! We are all having fun seeing that blue screen stuff. Well, especially me. So as you can see, Cheese Jimmy is rebooting after his blue screen. Oh, and we got a crash of the system. Crash of the system here on UF Disciple. So he's either too close from the edge or just not stable enough to run the complete benchmark for it. We have Disciple, just tuning a little bit more the reference clock, adjusting the voltage, 1.31 volts. Just changing the ratio to 46 and not 47. But it seems like he's back at uh, benching at 46. What can be done for that? There's 5 minutes and 50 seconds left in this second match of the qualifier. Hey guys, if you're tuning in on Twitch right here, this is the HWBot Wall Series and we're basically doing an overclocking competition for the amateur. So people that didn't have any experience about competitive overclocking before. It less than five minutes left in this competition. UF Disciple still didn't submit a score. That's going to be quite interesting to see if he can make one in time. And this is it. He just got it just before. Sorry for, for that. 1,428 points. So that means he's back in the lead. He's back in the lead. Yes, UF Disciple is back in the lead. That's going to be very tough for Cheese Jimmy to uh, catch up on him. 
Well, let's go see UF Disciple running the benchmark at the moment. He's at 4.65 gigahertz. Still not as good core as his opponent, but still, this is a decent score, decent enough that it was better than Cheese Jimmy on the same computer. So that means he's a little bit more in advance, improving his score by three points from 1428 to 1431. That will continue his a little bit of advance, and he's playing with the processor cache ratio. He's now at 45 multiplier for it. On the other hand, Cheese Jimmy is running the benchmark as well at 4.78 GHz. 1.35 volts, processor cache ratio about 40. Benchmark is about to finish for Cheese Jimmy. Let's see if he can get a better score than 1452. Less than three minutes left in this second semi-final to know who will go into the uh, HWBot World Series final for this. So let's see what can be done right here. Oh, and we got a blue screen on the UFD side, but it did actually that's funny because you have disciple is actually sitting next to the stream booth and he was like, oh, I got blue screen and just wave his hand in the air and it's like, oh, yeah, I know I'm going to have that. It's a blue screen yelling guy on the side. We have about two minutes left in this competition. Both of the overclocker are restarting the system. That would be super tough for them to uh, go into the system, reboot, uh, set the, setting, the settings they want in XTU to be able to continue for that. They are both restarting. This is taking some time as they have to uh, validate that everything would be all right. They're motivating themselves into having uh, this, uh, this convention because the one here will go into the final. That will be to win one complete computer or almost a complete computer. Friends of uh, Cheese Jimmy that, uh, that arrived and, uh, and gave him a high five. Let's see what's going on there. Okay, they are now back in the system, both of them. They are now uh, all back in here. So we have uh, UFC Disciple, UF Disciple on the blue side, setting 100, mega, uh, 100 megahertz and dot 75 for the reference clock, 1.33 volts. There is 35 seconds left in this qualifier. On the other side, we have Cheese Jimmy that is at 4.7 gigahertz. So 30 seconds left in this qualifier. That would be super intense. 20 seconds left, they are both running the benchmark at the moment. What will the score be? So this will be the last run they can do with this 12 seconds or 10, 10 seconds, seconds from now. 10 seconds from now, indeed. Is it you have disciple? Five seconds. Three, two, one. Happy New Year! <laughs> So this is it, we can see some of the screens. So UF Disciple is out. He got a blue screen! But sadly, Cheese Jimmy didn't even went, went through for it. So this is it, this is UF Disciple moving on to the grand final for this HWBot World Series for Amateur. So that will be quite interesting to see how that will be. So guys, we are here at the HWBot World Tour 2016. This was the second semi-final of this uh, final here in the South Africa leg. Quite, in, quite interesting to see 
quite interesting to see these guys being so fair play in the semi-final. This is their first competition to, uh, to, to be participating in. That's the first competitive overclocking experience they have. And it will be quite interesting to see how they do perform in the grand final. So, so far, we have Anro that won against G Man 236, and you have Disciple that won again. Is Jimmy. So, the grand final will be against Anro and you have Disciple. We will have to take about a 15 minutes break to make sure that everything is ready and all the stems are correct before the final for the amateur. So we will do the grand final and we'll uh, also do uh, uh, a, a, a small final if we can call it this way. So the grand final is basically uh, the two winner of the two run against the other and the other guys will have uh, the chance to find to be uh, number three or how that uh, that goes so we'll take a short break about 15 minutes before the next live and we'll be back soon for that until the next live you can always go and check out our giveaway on overclockingtv.com forward slash raffle you can win one of the seasonic psu p1000 power supply platinum edition uh, MSI Z170A Gaming Pro Carbon the G Skill Memory Kit DDR4 2x4GB 3466 C in memory kit that's the same memory kit that the extreme overclocker and the amateur are using in this uh, HWBot world series here in South Africa and you can win one of the three remaining collector thermal flask uh, from the HWBot event so these are some special stuff you can win thank you guys for tuning in we will see you in the next few minutes for the grand final of the HWBot world series for amateur